Hey guys, welcome back. Last year, we reviewed a cheap laptop from Chewy, the Gemibook Pro 14. It was a great laptop for work, and there's older games that were designed for a non-widescreen monitor. While window shopping on AliExpress, something caught my eye. The Gemibook X Pro with an Intel N100. $280 for this? Bargain. But if you look closer, $269 with a $20 off coupon? Welcome to Team Bandori. Subscribble. I am Batman. It took a week to arrive, and this is what came. It's nicely wrapped, with an air cushion surrounding. I usually need to blow mine up. Create your smart life. The box itself is pretty plain. On the back it shows us which model we have. Inside the cardboard box, we have a layer of polystyrene, and another box which holds the power adapter. It's rated at 12 volts, 2 amps, and has a barrel jack. And inside here is a laptop. But first, we should check out the manuals. Written in nine different languages? Yeah, I'm not reading this. Also given some extra junk, like this warranty card. And inspection... I, I don't know. Meh. At last, here it is. And I really like this colour. Underneath we can see Chewy, who thought a lot about keeping the laptop cool. And on the side we have a Kensington lock. I've still never used one of these. Here's the backside. And there's nothing but an air exhaust. And turning it around, we've got DC input, HDMI out, USB 3.0, USB C, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Open Sesame. These cool metal colours look great. And there's a texture on the keys which should stop it from being a fingerprint magnet. The keyboard is not mechanical, nor is it fatiguing to use. Sounds a bit like this. Unfortunately, there is no light function, so it might be difficult for some to use in the dark. We can use the function key in the bottom corner to change volume and turn off the touchpad, which is actually quite nice to use, especially once you get used to tapping for left click and using two fingers for other functions such as right click and moving the whole screen. When first turning on the computer, we're greeted to some Windows 11 setup screens, where we can set up the language of our choice. If your language is not here, we can add it later using Windows Update. And then we'll put straight into Windows. In Systems Information, it shows we have Windows 11 Home. Before updating Windows to the latest version, we have 203GB free to play with. Connecting to Wi-Fi, no issues whatsoever. And we can update, no problem. So first thing I do on a new install, I load up Ninite.com. With Ninite, we can automatically install free software, like Office, Paint Packages, Antivirus, and things like that. And then we can browse the internet and shop for fried chicken with ease. That chicken is very attractive. And even though our screen's in 1080p, here's some YouTube in 4K. And Netflix. Or you can look around the streets of Manchester. It's time to chew bubblegum and kick buttocks. We can use this for school or work. Here's Open Office and it runs great. And we can use Krita for graphics. The switch at the top is for the 720p webcam. Not the best quality, but a nice little extra. Hello, can you hear me? I'm in the computer. Hey. Let's move on to the specs. This is a cheap laptop for only $250. It is fairly small and has a new N100 chip from Intel. We have 8GB of DDR5 and a 256GB SSD. On paper, the specs look pretty promising. But for now, it's time for the benchmarks. In Geekbench, we have double the score of the previous Gemibook Pro. CPU score in 3D Mark is substantially higher, but we can't expect this to rival the 3D prowess of a full-sized gaming PC. Storage is slower than last year's model, but it's still an SSD, and active cooling keeps the laptop's thermals in check. Let's check out some games. Rocket League, 1080p, default settings, we get about 18 FPS. In 720p, we get over 30, and can tune it even further if we use performance modes. Fortnite now, 720p, low settings. We get from 15 to 20 FPS as we jump off the bus, but as we touch the ground, it becomes much more playable. Now for some games on Steam. 
Castle Crashes, 1080p. Streets of Rage. Ultra Street Fighter 4. Civilization 6. Moving on to the 3D games now. Here's Tomb Raider and 720p, default settings. And it's playing pretty well considering this laptop is only $250. Thank God she is coming over for a massage tonight. Borderlands 2, 720p, default settings. CSGO 720p. It's not exactly smooth, but definitely playable if you wanted to have a game in a pinch. Here's CS Office in competitive mode. And lastly, some GTA 5. We're at 720p, and the game's running from 30 to 40 FPS. If you want to use this machine for emulation, we'd recommend using Retrobat, which brings a RetroPie feel to your Windows machine. From here we can play some arcade games, like Tekken Tag Tournament on MAME. Or Outrun 2006 on the PSP, in French. It's Tekken 6. And God of War Chains of Olympus. Might need to click this down to two or three times resolution, but yeah, it works okay. Let's push this a bit further with GameCube emulation. F Zero GX is one of the hardest games to run, and this laptop is only just managing it. When it comes to alternative operating systems, they can be run from the BIOS. Battlesera runs okay. But as we only have one USB port and Bluetooth drivers are not quite there, we need to use a USB hub for controllers, which can get messy. Linux works on the system with sound, but like Batacera, Wi-Fi was not detected. So you may need something like this, which makes for a messy laptop. Let's see what's inside this thing. There are 12 screws on the back, then we can pull it open using a prying tool. But once open, there's not much to look at. We have one heat pipe to keep the thing cool, a large battery, and only one populated M2 socket which you could upgrade if we wanted something larger and faster. Let's get to the pros and the cons. This laptop is incredibly cheap. It's responsive and a great buy for someone who's considering a small and light laptop for work. Unfortunately, they used a 69 aspect ratio, which makes the laptop seem smaller than it already is. The choice of having limited IO ports is a shame and not having a lit keyboard could turn some people off. Comparing it to last year's laptop, the X-Pro is a step down in productivity due to the display and less options when it comes to storage and no microSD slot. But some may prefer a display without glare, and when it comes to the CPU, the N100 is no slouch. So can we recommend this laptop? Yes, but with a little more thought behind this, it could have been incredible. You know what else is incredible? Everyone who supports this channel, and of course, John Luke's manly ball. Anyway, this has been Amy Chicken at Team Pandori. I'll catch you on the next one. ta -ra. Catch you at the McDonald's car park. I'll be waiting.